Good morning. May I call you Luke? Yes. Okay. Uh, we're just one moment. We're having a little technical difficulty. Are we all set? Okay. Um, this one is oh there. Okay. Luke, can you tell the jury uh, what you do for a living? Sure. Uh, I own a uh, coffee company called Coffee House. Uh, we roast and import coffee here in Detroit. And um, you roast and import, but do you do, you do any, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Do you, do you do anything else? With, you have a store, you have, do you sell coffee from yeah, it? Yeah. And kind uh, of yes, yeah, so we sell to you know, about 100 different businesses around Metro Detroit, so coffee, tea, products like that. And then uh, we have our own cafe up at uh, Somerset Mall as well. And where's your business, the, the roasting and importing, where's it located? So the roasting and importing side of things, uh, all the manufacturing is done at um, 1111 Elview Street in Detroit. In Detroit. Mm -hmm. And can you tell the jury about what area that is in Detroit? Yes, yeah, so it's in a neighborhood called Island View, which is like mostly industrial buildings. Um, it's basically situated a block off of where Belle Isle is located. So generally East Detroit is kind of the consideration here. Okay. Um, and I want to draw your attention to November 30th of 2021. Uh, was your business at that location at that time? Yes. And were, were you residing near or around your, your business? Yeah, at the time I was living, um, I mean, maybe a mile away, pretty close though. Okay. And just let's just take a... a a moment, and can you just can you tell the jury what this building um, is, how much of the space you occupy, and what it's used for? Sure. So um, it's a industrial building that was built in around the 1920s. Originally, they built like pickup trucks or something inside of there, but um, now the current owner has it basically for different um, tenants. You know, so we occupy about 3,000 square feet in the building. I'd say there's probably five to ten different tenants who rotate in and out every now and then. Uh, the, the building itself is basically um, split up into like one, one to two thousand square foot units itself. Um, so at any time, you know, I'd say there's on average ten tenants in that building um, at any given time. So. And are they all um, the same type of, of tenants? No, no, no. All completely different people. Like our neighbors, uh, they like breed rare plants. Okay. Uh, tons of different stuff. All right. Um, and... On the first floor, is that where you are? Yes. Correct. All right. Mm -hmm. Who else is on the first floor, if you know? So there's the rare plant uh, place, and then um, there's uh, somebody who packages like fine art. Um, there is a, there's a painter who uh, does just like hobbyist work, and then I think that's it for us on the first floor. I don't know if there was somebody else in there at the time, but I think it was just that four. Okay. Mm -hmm. How do you enter the, well, we just heard testimony that they're about parking. Um, our former uh, witness wasn't sure. Can you tell the jury whether there was parking within or outside of um, the the building? Yeah, so you can park in three space or three, I would say, designated areas uh, for the building. There's one on one side of the building. There's another on the other side, and both of those entrances are gated. So you have like a little, you know, fob uh, to open the gate, garage opener, garage Each opener. Tenant has a fob. Uh, yeah, well, they, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say every single one does, but. Usually, if you ask, um, you know, the property manager can approve that and give you one. Uh, and then people generally park on the street as well. Um, now there's like a, a dirt lot across the street that people park, but at the time of this, uh, that was not their land. So, and three was, general spots. Was there indoor parking? Uh, no, there's not designated indoor parking, though um, some tenants have garages. Okay, let me, where let me ask it a different uh -huh. way because it's, it's relevant to what sure. was happening that uh -huh. night. Do you use that building space for anything other than your, just your business? So on the third floor of the building at the time, um, I used our garage storage area to put one of my cars away. All right. Mm -hmm. And just briefly, because it, it relates, what, yeah. what's your relationship with cars? <laughs> okay, so um, I just... Uh, Your Honor, I, mean, I would object to the relevance. Your Honor, um, yeah, if, uh, I, if I, I could just respond. I um, can I just respond, please? Mm -hmm. uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask him about identifying the car and how he was able to identify that car. Um, I, I think most people wouldn't have been able to, so I'm, I'm just trying to lay a, a foundation. Well, based, based on my knowledge of previous testimony, I'm, I'm going to allow that. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so I'm just a general car enthusiast. I think I, you know, I've been obsessed with cars ever since I was a kid. 
And uh, at the time, I had two or three cars, and one of them, uh, I, it was like a nicer one, so I put it away. You know, I didn't leave it on the street where my house was because I had street parking. So I had one of my cars that got like hit. You know, the mirror got pulled off, so I obviously didn't want that to happen to a nicer car. So um, on the third floor, we have a garage, and so I pull that in during uh, you know the nighttime or any time I don't plan on enjoying it, driving it. Um, okay. When so, then I can drive my little. All right. Car. Thank you. Uh, yep. So is there any <clears throat> need? Was there any vendor vendor type um, businesses in that building? And the reason I ask is, is it a place where customers would come and park and open to the public? Uh, in the I, building? I would say that it's generally not um, like a public building. There's not. Um, present retail in the building. There's not like, for example, our roastery doesn't have a coffee shop or a, any cafe component. It's strictly like a, you know, business okay. um, for manufacturing. And when you switched the car that, that night, do you remember, did you go, and, and were you at the, the warehouse that night at a, at later in the evening? Yes. Um, do you remember about what time it was? Uh, probably around 10 p.m. And is that something you would routine, routine, routinely do at night because of the, the situation with your cars or Objection that? Objection on leading. I, I just tried to get Why? out. Or, so that it wouldn't be a leading question. Why were you there that night? Um, to, to switch the cars. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, so, um, talk to me or tell the jury what, if anything, you knew about the, the Oxford shooting or the crumblies that, that sure. evening? Yeah, so I was um, generally aware of, obviously, the news that had happened. You know, I, I read the news about the shooting, um, which I think everybody in Michigan really kind of heard those, heard what had happened at that point. Um, early in the day, I remember seeing a, um, a poster about, um, you know, the parents being on the run. And okay, so, you're, you're gesturing your hand and when you mm -hmm. say poster, um, and for... Do you remember, was that November 30th? Of, of, what, what day was that? I, I assume it was the same day that um, this happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. Earlier well, in the let day. me back up. Sure. The same day that they were charged or the same day that the event happened? The, Objection, Your Honor. I, I don't think that there's been testimony that Mr. Kirtley is aware of when they were charged. Okay. I like, she's trying to, he said, he said the same day that this happened. So she's clarifying if he means the encounter the at encounter. Ben Bellevue or the, or the shooting. Mm -hmm. The encounter. Oh, okay. Uh, do you remember the actual day that you that this occurred that night? Uh, the 30th of November, I believe. That was the shooting. Yeah. Do you remember oh, the day then, that what date it was? If I said December 3rd, does that make sense to you? It seems it seems correct. I okay. don't know, like if I remember it off the top of my head, the exact okay. date. Backing up, you were mm -hmm. motioning to your hand and saying poster, and uh -huh. I'm, I'm what? what so uh, I saw it on Facebook. Okay, uh -huh. and what did you see? So it was a poster. Um, it was a, essentially like a wanted poster. So there were pictures of, um, you know, the parents, a picture of the car, the license plate was on there, and then um, I think just general information about what had happened. Were you aware that law enforcement <coughs> was looking for the crumb police? Yes. And uh, do you remember about what time you arrived that, that evening? Uh, around 10 p.m. Okay. And uh, tell the jury what, if anything, you saw when you entered the, the parking space. Is it Well, first of all, mm -hmm. when you go there at that time of day, is there usually anybody in the parking lot? Uh, not really. There's a couple tenants who like leave their cars there. Um, there's like a work van for a millwork company. Um, but generally, there's not like many vehicles that hang out in that lot overnight. Okay. So you drive into the parking lot, and mm -hmm. what do you see? So originally, um, so I drove into, if you're facing the front of the building, uh, I always park on the right side, so there's two lots left, right? Um, and I just have a fob for the right lot. It's two different ones. So I pulled in, um, was just doing my thing. Generally, um, there's some cars there. So, you know, when I saw this car that was backed into the spot in the corner, originally I didn't pay any mind to it. You know, I okay, when like, you say this car, what do you mean? So you, sure, you drove in, you did see a car? I did see a car, yeah. Okay, can and you so tell the jury where it was? Yep, so it's back in the, it was, like if I'm facing the front of the lot, it's a rectangular lot, and it was in the back right corner. Um, so probably the furthest spot from the, the building entrance, in theory. And was it backed in with the front out, or was it the other way? It was backed in with the front out. Okay. And what else did you see? Um, so I saw that car there, but originally, you know, didn't pay too much attention to it. And then walked into the building 
And then when I walked out of the building uh, was when I was really kind of like met face to face with the front of the car. And that's when I remembered, um, you know, the original Wanted poster. I saw, you know, I, being like a car enthusiast, I saw that and it just kind of stuck with me. It was like a newer Kia. So I had just not seen that car in person before. So like when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's a new Kia. And when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's like that new Kia. You know, so like, you can tell by looking at the, the front of the car it was that it was a new Kia? Yeah, so if you looked at the like poster, it was like that stock image of the car. You know, you see like on websites and everything. It, um, so it's obviously the front of the car. And it was this, I believe it was the same exact color too um, on the poster. So when I saw it, I was like, Oh, like, I remember where I saw this from. Okay, one moment. Here. All right, so what did you, what did you do next when you came out and... <laughs> yeah, so um, when I saw the car, I was like, okay, that's, I remember seeing that. I pulled up the poster on my phone, and when I was doing that, I was walking to the back of the car to check the plate, because I remember seeing the plate on the actual um, you know, poster. And so I walked around the car with my flashlight on, uh, and then you know, obviously it hit me when I saw like the license plate on the ad, and then I was standing in front of the license plate too. Um, but yeah, so basically I had pulled up um, the wanted po poster and subsequently was walking around the car. And did the license plate on. match? It did. And did you see anything else of significance in the back um, of the car. So when I was looking at the back of the car, um, I had then noticed uh, there was a person sitting next to the car. There's like an elevated curb that kind of sits behind where this car was, and it's uh, like protects like a little garden area. And so somebody was sitting on that curb with their hood up. It was like a blue plaid hoodie, and uh, I didn't, you know, when I was walking through the car, I didn't see anybody, and also it was dark, so you know, I wasn't expecting to see anybody really. I thought it was just like a car at that time. Did you say so, anything, or did that individual say anything? No. Um, they stayed kind of like turned around uh, with their hood up. I saw them, and then I turned my flashlight off and headed back into the building. Okay. What did you do next? Um, so I walked into the building, had quickly, briskly headed into my unit, locked all the doors. Uh, the lights were off at the time, so I kept the lights off, and then called 911. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you um, what's been marked as Exhibit 302. And uh, this is the security footage from your building. It, how many cameras, if you know, does the building have? I don't know it's off the top of my head exactly, but I could tell you there's uh, one in like the center lobby area, kind of like the general promenade where most people congregate. Um, there is one on the side of the building, one or two on the side that we're talking about, one on the front, maybe another one on the other side, but I don't like have them memorized. Okay. So um, I'm going to, we're going to start this at 22.56, which the actual time is 10.34 p.m. And what are we looking at here, Luke? So uh, what we're looking at is the parking lot, uh, the parking lot that I am, that I parked my car in. And so this is, when I was talking earlier about facing the front of the building and looking backwards, this is um, the furthest from the front of the building. Okay, so. But this is attached to who, the building. Who is that right there? Um, I assume that this is the person that I saw in the blue plaid hoodie. Okay. And in this photo, um, where is the front, the entrance that you would have gone in? So where they just walked out of, so on the okay. right side of the screen. And eventually we're going to see you pull in. Will, will, will we see that at the top of the screen? Yes. Okay. Correct. Is that your car? Uh, I assume so. Uh, I'll know once I see the roof rack on it. Uh, but at time, time checks out. Okay. Do you do you see the the Kia that you spotted in this image? Yeah, on the left side there. Okay, it's kind of hard to see. Okay. Is that your car? Yes. And are you parking right in front of the entrance? Um, I mean, not like directly in front of the door, but you know, one, one of two the close spots. parking yes. spots. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we see, is, is that individual you yes. at the right of the screen? Mm -hmm. And is that you going back into the building? Yeah. Okay, what's happening there? Um, did you go out to your car to look at the car? Uh, no, I think that when I just, so I think this is when I just first noticed the car. Like, I think I just saw myself look over and just, yeah, it looks like okay. that checks out. I was probably just grabbing something on my back. All right, and seat. that's you right there? Yes. Are you holding anything? Uh, my phone. For the record, around, this is around 23.04, which is actually 10.42 p.m. And you're, are you walking at the same pace or a different pace than you? you maybe, a little, you're relevant? maybe a little quicker. I, I, the, I'm, I'm eliciting just general testimony yeah. from a fact yeah. witness about yeah. his, what he observed. Oh, I, I, thank you. Um, so you, why are you walking at a faster pace? Um, probably to, uh, I mean, Probably a lot of emotions going on at that specific time. Okay. Um, you know, I at the time when I first went to the car, I didn't expect to see anybody. So when I did, I was like, okay, I want to get safe inside. Okay, and we're going to play exhibit 303, um, which is the 911 call. Um, and were you feeling any emotions during that call? Uh, yeah, definitely, for sure. Okay. Um, that's something that I feel like, well, I've personally never experienced before, is like that type of connecting the dots like that, um, and I hope everybody else doesn't. Okay. It's a lot. All right. Call one. Call on Friday, December 3rd, 2021, 10.43 and 14 seconds p.m. Victor 911, what is the address of the emergency? 1111 Belby Street. Repeat the address of the verification. 
right here. Okay, look, did, did you make that call as soon as you got inside? Uh, as soon as I, I got my office. Okay. So yeah, I mean within 30 seconds. All right, and I wanna go back to the previous video and finish that um, to show what happened after you went inside. Yes. That's you, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what is that, if you know? Uh, that Who was is the that? person that I saw uh, walking into the building. So, if you ask me at the time, um, that somebody was gonna be walking in behind me, I would have told you no way. You know, the building is, there's fobs for every door. Um, but like I said, you know, it's not a public building. And so uh, when the officers came by, they asked me, you know, I was I was like, oh, they, they probably took off somewhere. Um, I would, my confidence in them being inside of the building was, you know, limited. You did I, not I, think they were inside, whoever that correct. was? Yeah, I definitely didn't think that they were right behind me. Okay, mm -hmm. um, in the call you stated it, you referred to the individual as female mm -hmm. and she. Yeah. Did you ever see the person's face? No, I didn't. They were turned to their back. I think it was just like generally the, the figure of the person that I saw, um, more or less. Okay. Um, what happened after you called 911? Um, so you can see an officer in the top right getting there. So that's pretty quick? Was it a few minutes? Was yeah, a couple minutes. It, it wasn't too bad, um, especially for Detroit. Response oh. times. Uh, okay. So the when you come or I came out and I actually met them out there because I saw their lights. Um, if it wasn't the siren, it was like one of their floodlights. And but when I saw you somebody. came out of the building, did you know where the individual was? No, okay. I did not. I assumed at the time they probably just took off. All right. Know? I was uh, to be honest, I was surprised that the car was still even there. I thought they like. Okay. Would have, would have All right. Left. Um, at some point, did more than just one officer arrive? Yeah, so I think it was one or two squad cars that showed up originally, and then, so there's the second one right there. Um, so I walked them through the building to get into the parking lot, because the parking lot is closed. And I think once they kind of confirmed that the car was correct, um, that's when uh, a lot more people showed up. What, what's a lot? Ten plus squad cars. All right. Mm -hmm. What? Where did you remake? Well, let me just... At what point was this over to the extent where you went home? How many? Oh, I was there till like two or three. Okay, mm -hmm. and were you in the building the whole time? No, I was in the building for probably like an hour. Um, I was in my unit, uh, and then they had questions. You know, I was talking with them a little bit, um, kind of just like generally floating between the front of the building and then inside my office. Um, and then they, I got into a squad car and they took me to what they called like a command post or something like that, um, where it was like a couple blocks away, they had set up like a central command, like HQ for other officers and stuff like that. At some point, did you learn whether or not the individuals were taken in custody? Yeah, uh, like way late in the night. Um, did you did you learn where they were located? Yes, I did. They um, So they actually walked me, like they showed me where it happened afterwards. Where, where were they located? So the painter that I referenced earlier on this, uh, testimony, we shared basically drywall with them, two pieces of drywall, so they were right in the unit adjacent to where ours is. And that unit, did, is that, that's on the first floor, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Correct, yeah. Where, does it have windows in it at all? It does, yeah. Uh -huh. And are they facing the parking lot, or are they yeah, facing... Yeah, so the, if you're facing the front of the building, my unit is on the right, it poses the right side of the building, and then there's another unit behind ours that also faces right into the parking lot. So this unit would have looked, um, and I say looked, it's not like a clear, perfectly clear window, it's like frosted, but uh, would have looked into the parking lot. All right. Mm -hmm. did, the, did the law enforcement that showed up, were they, did, 
did they have lights and sirens? Were there any lights? Were there any yeah. sounds? Yeah, tons. Um, and you know, like we're pretty aware of what goes on, just given like the the thinness of the walls. You know, there's no insulation between our walls, and then um, you know, especially at night, you're aware of any lights that go down the street. Um, anything like okay, that. You mentioned but, the walls and the thin walls. What do you mean? Do you mean you're aware because of noise or because of um, what you see? Yeah, both. Um, for I mean, for the walls, you know, we hear other units, other people, you know, in the building. Like, I know when other people are in the building, um, for sure. And the Do you, the just to clear your testimony, you know they're in the building uh, because you can hear them or you know they're in the building because you see them? Uh, are we talking about the officers in general, or in general? You, um, hold on, just let me finish yeah, my question. Ahead. This wall you share mm -hmm. is what are, is what you're trying to say that you can tell if somebody's in there even if you haven't seen them. Yeah, okay. you can hear them. All I right. mean, if they're making if they're making noise. Okay. And when you were in the building for that hour, uh, was the building being searched or were the was law enforcement out in the parking lot? Uh, no, the building was being searched at that time. And what did you hear, if anything? Uh, so I was in like the front of the building at the time. Uh, they were, I mean, they were definitely. Had guns drawn. You know, they were searching the building. They were announcing that they were there. Uh, they were definitely making a presence. Okay. okay. Before this uh, day, um, which was um, in December third, mm -hmm. I guess it was December late night. But yeah. before this occurred, um, had you ever seen anything discarded or left out in a hallway um, in the building? Oh yeah, so um, in the center promenade that I mentioned earlier about like where the camera is, there's um, people put like, I think, I don't know, people put things to give away there and then also people like store things there for very short periods of time. At the time there was like a new tempur mattress that was there, or new to me, you know, looking new. Um, and it was sitting up against a wall and I was there for a while because somebody had like taped a note to it that was like, can I buy this from you, you know, whoever it was. And how long was it there? Days, weeks? Days, okay. yeah. Uh -huh. And um, why is the mattress significant to you? Um, so, well, so the mattress was um, taken into the unit, and I saw that afterwards. So I, uh, when they showed me the unit again, um, you could see that the mattress was then in there. Um, you know, I, I don't really know who actually owned the mattress, okay. even to this day. At some point, did you ever see the mattress again? Yeah, so then people, somebody, I don't know who, but somebody took it back out of the hallway, and I think whoever actually owned it um, didn't want it anymore, because it floated around, like it was sometimes like in front of the unit that they were in, and sometimes in the middle of the hallway, and sometimes like on the floor, like it was, it was a very, um, yeah, it was very agnostic where it was for a while, and then I don't know what happened to it. Okay, all right. Nothing further. Ross? Yes, Ryan, thank you. Good morning. Morning? Morning. So, excuse me, just one moment. So you went to 1111 Bellevue on December 3rd of 2021 at approximately 10 p.m. from what you recall? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. yes. Um, I'm, if you say, mm, I might ask yeah, you to say yes. Time, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Um, you said that you described 1111 Bellevue as an industrial building that was once used for manufacturing. Yeah, in the 1920s. Right. So, yeah. On December 3rd of 2021, it was not a manufacturing building. Uh, no, there. I mean, there are individuals, tenants who do different types of manufacturing. Like, there's a millwork company. We I technically manufacture coffee, uh, but they're not manufacturing pickup trucks in the way that they were 100 years ago. Right. So in the 20s, it was used as uh, as basically a, a truck factory. As far as I know. Okay. Yeah. But on December 3rd of 2021, it was a business building. Correct, yeah. It was just industrial in style. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, specifically the look of the building. Right, the look of the building was industrial, but it was mm -hmm. not an industrial use building. Uh, I think it's technically zoned industrial still uh, to this day. I don't know if it's zoned mixed use, but I'm not, I'm not fully positive on the um, regulations and codes okay. of buildings. What we agree on is that they're not building pickup trucks, right? Correct. It's not abandoned. Correct. Um, there were multiple tenants in the building. Correct. Um, and there had been multiple tenants for quite some time, for what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. At least a couple of years. Okay. Your, where you roast coffee is approximately 3,000 
square feet, is that correct? Yeah, so there's 2,000 square feet on the first floor and an additional 1,000 on the third floor. Okay, so the 2,000 square feet on the first floor is the is the space where you share the wall with the artist studio. Yes, correct. And then you have the 1,000 square feet on the floor, which is where you keep your cars. Uh, yeah, at the time, yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. There's also, um, you can drive your car in. In fact, in this video we can see, I think we can see where your car is parked. And you can drive your car in to like a, is there like a garage door or so, something? So not in this. Um, so it's on the front of the building. There's a, there's a um, drive-in garage door. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how people get to their various garages, is that? Uh, yeah, to say, I would say like they're not... There aren't any other garages in the space, but um, that's how people unload and load uh, their cars in there. You said that you were generally aware of the Oxford High School shooting on December, I'm sorry, November 30th of 2021. Yeah. You had seen media reports, I'm sure. Yes. You'd read stuff on social media. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you said that everyone knew what happened. Yeah. On December, on November 30th of 2021. Correct. Prior to December 3rd of 2021, you saw a poster, uh, a wanted poster, on yes. social media. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. And you saw it the day, you saw it on December 3rd of 2021? I believe so. And that poster had a photo of James and Jennifer Crumbly? Yes. Or photos of James and Jennifer mm -hmm. Crumbly? Yes. A photo of their vehicles? Yes. A license plate number? Yes. General information about the shooting? Yes. It indicated, I think your testimony was, it indicated that they were on the run. Um, yes, I think it was more of like a be on the lookout or a, a wanted poster generally. There was a reward offered, if you remember? I don't remember at the time. Your testimony was that the Kia, which we can see in the, on the left side of the frame, was parked the farthest from the building entrance. Do you remember that being your testimony? Yes. You also testified that there's actually a door on the right side of the frame in front of where your car is parked. Yes, I would say that um, the main entrance and then the um, ancillary entrances, I'm speaking mostly in regards to the main entrance of the building, which is on the front. Okay, so there are multiple entrances to the building. Mm -hmm, there are, yes, there are three entrances to the building. Okay, so there wasn't just one way to get in on the front of the building, there was also the, the door right where your car is parked. And in fact, yes. we watched you walk into that door. Yes. You said that you walked up to the Kia on the left side of the frame, you walked around to the back, we, we watched you do that, correct? Yes. You confirmed the license plate number from yes. what was on the wanted poster mm -hmm. on your social media. Yes. And then you saw someone sitting next to the car. Yes. If you recall, that person was smoking? Uh, I, do, I don't recall, I, don't, I saw that in other news articles and things like that, um, but I, I did not say that or see that originally. Okay. You said that you didn't expect to see anyone sitting outside the car? Yeah. You expected just to have the car there empty? I think for clarity, I didn't expect to see the car or have the car be uh, a matching car in the first place. So there were a lot of unexpected things happening at that specific time. Uh, but that's about it. You said that you wanted to get safely inside? Yes. You assumed that the person that you saw was dangerous? Uh, yes. That was based on what you had seen on the news and in media reports? Yes. Based on the wanted poster? Yeah, uh, maybe not particularly, I wouldn't say that like the poster said armed and dangerous or anything like that. Not 100% positive, um, but I think generally in a situation like that, I would fear for my safety. Based on your own personal beliefs about the Oxford High School shooting and what you had heard in the media about James and Jennifer Crumb. Yes. The person sitting outside the car didn't say anything to you? They did not. They didn't say, hey, look away. No. They didn't was, say a word, right? There was no interaction between us. In Exhibit 303, you called, was your 911 call. You recall that you told the 911 dispatcher that the parents were on the run? Yes. Um, and again, that was information that you had based on what you'd heard in the news and the media and yes. what you've seen on the wanted poster. The person that you encountered next to the Kia didn't say, hey man, I'm, I'm running away. You, you said there was no encounter there at all. There was no interaction. Okay. Now, right around this time, 
timestamp, uh, 2306 on the video, which I believe is about 20 minutes earlier in real time. Mm -hmm. um, the prosecutor pointed out that somebody walked across the parking lot after you'd entered the building. Yes. That person didn't run after you, correct? Uh, no. From what you saw in the video? Correct. They didn't chase you down? They did not. They didn't threaten you in any way? They did not. You didn't even know that they were there? Uh, I, I, obviously, I saw them. I didn't know that they followed me in. Correct. You didn't know that they walked in after you'd walked into the building? Correct. I think by the time I was in my unit, um, you know, I didn't hear the door shut. I didn't know if they, like, softly closed the door or anything, but um, I didn't know that they were in it. You had no knowledge that that person had even entered the building? Correct. You then testified that there was about a couple minutes later, we watch, and, and I'll play the video too. I just want to see. We'll play the video too. A couple minutes after this 2306, um, or a couple minutes after you called 911, the police showed up. Correct. So if you look at the timestamp right now, it's 2306.54. Mm -hmm. And then it jumps to 2321. And then we play it for a little while and we see what, what you believe was a patrol car out there outside the, the fence, correct? Yes. At 2321. Yes. So at that point, it had been just shy of about 20 minutes between you entering the building, at some point making a 911 call, and the police showing up. Uh, from from this, yeah. From this video. Yeah. Okay. I'd say my my conception of time was probably a little skewed in that specific moment, just given the the heightened senses, you know. Yeah, and I'm not that. I'm not yeah, asking you to lock into the time number in the couple minutes. I'm asking it actually was not just a couple minutes; it was actually more than a couple minutes. Sure. That's that's all I'm asking. Sure. Okay. Now, I, I I thought I heard you say this a couple of times, but I, I just want to clarify. You said that you were at the building for about an hour after you made your 911 call? Um, more or less. I'm not 100% positive exactly. Then you were driven to um, a temporary, what you call the command post? Yeah. It that was law like enforcement a, had set up? Yeah, correct. I think there were, you know, there was media there. There was um, the more squad cars. There was like a massive blue bus for the police. And then, and this was the part that I wanted to make sure I heard you say correctly. And then the police took you back to this building and walked you through Well, my the scene. car was there, so I had to get my car. And so um, when I was going through the building to get my car, um, they were, you know, there were a bunch of police in the building, and they were like, oh, this is where they were. And they allowed you to enter the scene? And No, I did not enter the scene. Okay. And that's what I was unclear about, because you, you testified that you had seen the mattress in the unit after... James and Jennifer Crumley yeah, were arrested. Yeah, so, so when I walked through the center of the building, you have to turn right um, to exit through the, to access this parking lot that's on the screen. And so to exit that, you have to pass by the door of um, where they were hiding. And so that door was open, so you could see the mattress. Okay. Now, you talked about what you heard while you were in the building. You said that you were at the front of the building while the police were searching the building? Uh, yeah, so I, like I said, I was generally kind of floating around. Um, you know, because we have two, I have two doors on my building, or my unit, for example. I have, like, side doors and the front door. And so I was somewhere between those, or I was outside in the front. So you know what you heard and saw, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what you observed on your own? Yes. You have no knowledge of what James Crumbly heard or saw while the police were there? That's correct. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor, just briefly. Do people... Um, <coughs> Is there any residential um, unit? And, and I guess what I'm asking is, do people sleep at the building? No, it's in it's within the terms of my lease, at least. Um, and generally, I think it's one boilerplate lease that goes across all of them. Um, though that is an assumption that it is not allowed. Uh, you're not allowed to sleep there. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I want to play the the video, just a portion of it, quickly. Um, Your testimony was that you never saw the front of this individual? That's right. But what, the um, the actual piece of clothing, how did you describe it? Uh, in the, the, Your Honor, ask and answer. How did you describe it 
You said something in the 911 call. I said it was a plaid hoodie. Okay, do you know what color, do you remember what color it was? It, during the 911 call, uh, I didn't say. I think it might have been blue. Okay, but you're not sure. Not 100% positive. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to show you another image. Exhibit 304. First of all, is that the art studio, if you know? Uh, yeah, I've never been inside of it, but uh, like I said, when you pass the, to go to the parking lot or leave the parking lot, sometimes the doors open. So I know that there's like paintings in there and I know the general footprint of the okay. space, just given where it is. All right. Uh, do you, did you ever see uh, James or Jennifer Crumbly other than? No, okay. only the, the, obviously the seeing somebody next to the car, but when they were arrested and taken away, I wasn't in the building, or I was at the like command post. Okay. Right? Um, and can you describe what that individual is wearing that's not the police officer? Uh, it looks like a blue um, sweatshirt or hoodie of some sort, plaid. Okay. Thank you. Let me you trigger your Free free cross. Okay. Mr. Curley, to your knowledge, James or Jennifer Crumbly were not tenants of 1111 Bellevue, correct? That's correct. You have no idea if they had any knowledge of what the terms of the lease were, correct? Uh, yeah, that's correct. No further questions, Your Honor. But they wouldn't have had a fob because they weren't a tenant, correct? That's Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. As far as you know, they were not a tenant. That's correct. May you be excused? Yes, you can step down. Thanks. We have a brief